Okay, picking up where we left off on page 232, we're talking about social engineering. And I can convince people to give me their name and password and give me access to restricted areas. It's just human nature. If, you're, if you look like you belong, then typically people will just say, sure, no problem. Uh, there have been some really cool um, tricks that people, you know, the companies that will be hired to test the security of a system. And this one example they talked about, this guy went to this bank and uh, he couldn't he couldn't get him he couldn't couldn't get past them he couldn't do any social engineering to get past them. you know hey I'm Mr Jones from the such and such company I've come to inspect the vault they all went uh, let me call my manager and let me you know they couldn't get past it so instead he went to the break room and had a little bucket full of uh, USB thumb drives and a little note saying um, you know this is a, a promotional product from XYZ Corporation. Uh, please have one. You know, they're free. Went back home. Within 30 minutes, people had grabbed those thumb drives, stuck them in their computer. It had a virus on it. Lit up, and uh, he had all the information he needed. He went back to the bank the next day and says, well, here's all the uh, names and counts of all your employees. And they went, <gasps> It was done through social engineering, a type of social engineering. I uh, convinced people to uh, basically allow me in, either physically me or me being some piece of hardware or software. Okay, so some information privacy is, is in the law. Um, they talk about HIPAA. HIPAA is uh, the, the type of protection that you have to have for medical information. And it's pretty extensive. If you ever read the guidelines for HIPAA, they talk about if it's in a database, the database has to be encryption. It has to be end-to-end -end, uh, encryption. There can't be any portion of it transmitted in the clear. You know, it's got to have this, got to have that. It's very good. Then you have like the Privacy Act, which says there's not really a computer list of things you have to do, but it talks about if I gather information about you, here's what I can and cannot do with that information. Okay. Okay. Let's continue. On page 233, this is where it gets a little funky. Talk about monitoring employees. You know, let's say, for example, um, it's a typing pool or something that's just kind of boring rote typing going on. And so I just put monitoring software in there that counts the number of keystrokes, right? So how many keys were pressed in a day? And that way I can compare my employees. And you might think, eh, that's a little kind of over the top, but I can see why that'd be okay. But then what if I took that data and was actually looking at what you were typing? Now, is that okay? See how it gets a little fuzzy, doesn't it? So I'm collecting data, and maybe you're typing a note to grandma on, com on company time. Sh should a company be able to read your email? Yeah, a little fuzzy, huh? So employee monitoring, and we, talk we could be talking about, you know, video cameras. We're talking about monitoring software to see what programs you're app you know, running and key loggers and things of that nature. And generally speaking, there's a... There's an awful lot of negative sentiment about this. And so if you're going to use some sort of an employee monitoring, it ought to be as benign as possible. And you need to tell them up front, this is going to be happening. You know, no hidden monitoring going on. You need to tell them about it. Okay, let's continue. On page 234, content filtering. A lot of businesses, for example, um, if, particularly if you have a, 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 a not a very robust internet connection coming in, you want to filter the things that the people can do from inside your company. Perhaps you want to limit streaming audio. Perhaps you want to limit YouTube. And clearly you want to limit porn sites. So you want to keep the amount of traffic down or you want to limit the content from people inside your company being able to go to the outside world and get stuff. That's very prevalent use in, in corporate America today. So some sort of web filtering software. And some of it could be just for policy use, you know, don't go to porn sites, or other could be, you know, our bandwidth isn't all that great, so please don't stream music while you're at work, because we're trying to ha have customers are trying to use that very same pipe coming in, and customers are more important than you listening to music. Okay, so we've reached the end. Let's go over the summary. Uh, we discussed a variety of digital security risks, yep. Cyber crime and cyber criminals, yep. The risk and safeguards against internet and network attacks, unauthorized access and use, software theft, information theft, hardware theft, vandalism and failure, various backup strategies and methods of securing wireless communication, 
ethical use in society and various ways to protect privacy of personal information. Okay, so we have reached the end. Remember now the study guide is on page 236. It's pretty good. The key terms on the next page. And then the checkpoint on the page after that. So if you have any trouble whatsoever in this chapter, go through that. And if you got that, you're good to go. If you don't got that, well then go back and read the stuff or perhaps take a look at the video one more time. Okay, that's the end. So we'll see you guys again in some future video.